You can stop it. Now, what, so... Go to that image. Like, if you picture dropping a pebble into um, a, a pond mm -hmm. or a pool, everything expands in these, these longitudinal waves, right. perfect spheres, unless there's something else in there. But when it hits the edge... It all starts bouncing its way back, and when it meets, when these returning waves meet expanding waves, that's when we get our first geometry. So this is the proof that the universe is not infinite, but finite, because you could not have shape without the returning waves, and the ret waves would not return unless it was bouncing off of the edge of something. Look how strange that is. Bingo. Look how strange that, that hexagon on the top of, the, of Saturn is. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, that's Saturn, right? Yep, and then yeah. we don't even and that he, is so crazy. He explains exactly how he built it, all the angles of incidence, all the the pressure systems that he used, all of that is so it can be a repeated experiment. But they've ignored this. This is in the beginning of my book. You go to my book; that's the first page on there. Before you even open it up, I've got this, and we rebuilt the the Milky Way galaxy. The same way, and it predicts the star arrangement better than NASA does. And this is without dark matter. This is without dark energy. This is without the standard model. So is dark matter dark, or dark energy? Are they primarily theoretical? That's all theoretical. They've never, they've never witnessed it, and we could. Terence Howard's insights into the nature of the universe align closely with biblical teachings. The word "universe" itself implies a singular expression akin to a divine utterance. Indeed, Genesis 1-3 records the very first speech of God that initiated creation, let there be light. Moreover, biblical passages such as Job chapter 38-4, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me, if you understand, and Genesis chapter 1, verses 6-8, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. Vividly depict the deliberate act of creation, with God forming the earth's foundations and separating the waters above and below the firmament. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22, He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches you the heavens like a canopy, and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Further reinforces this notion, describing God as the one who stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Therefore, while Terence Howard rightly asserts that the universe is not infinite, a deeper biblical perspective suggests that we are part of an enclosed system, intricately designed and orchestrated by a divine creator. Just as the scriptures reveal the deliberate craftsmanship of the heavens and the earth, they also invite us to contemplate the purpose and significance of our place within this wondrous creation. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share, and comment. God bless you.